Hello and welcome to this version 7.3 release overview of the Cisco Secure Firewall. My name is Alan and I'm an engineer in the Network Security Technical Marketing team here at Cisco. Version 7.3 is packed full of new features and updates that will further enhance your user experience and enable even more capabilities. Here are some of the topics I'll be covering in this overview. Quick fingerprint detection within encrypted traffic flows, the new remote access VPN dashboard, how you can speed up maintenance tasks with fleet upgrades, seamlessly insert secure firewall into a Microsoft Azure platform, allocate CPU cores based on your primary use case, a new simplified integration topology with Cisco Umbrella, and much more. It's important to stress that I won't be covering everything related with the 7.3 release in this video, so please make sure that you review the release notes as well as additional feature-specific content that we publish here on our channel. Let's begin with the quick fingerprinting update. Over the past couple of releases, we've introduced our encrypted visibility engine, or EVE. EVE allows you to see into TLS encrypted flows and to identify applications and malware without the need to perform decryption. It's a great security feature that reduces the performance overhead when looking for threats or policy violations within encrypted traffic. In 7.3, We've extended EVE's capability by enabling the identification of client applications within encrypted flows that use the QUIC protocol. Not only that, but threat scores generated by EVE can now create indication of compromise events, enabling users to identify hosts which may be infected without performing decryption. Here we can see that encrypted visibility has detected malware within an encrypted flow and with a very high confidence score. This has also triggered an indication of compromise, which we can take a look at next. Viewing hosts with active indications of compromise, we can see that this host has an indication of compromise that's been triggered by the encrypted visibility engine. And remember, the secure firewall detected this malware in an encrypted flow without needing to perform decryption. Next, we'll take a look at the remote access VPN dashboard. We've added a new dashboard specifically for remote access VPNs to simplify the monitoring of your remote or hybrid workforce. The dashboard provides a visual overview of active remote access VPN connections. There's a geographical map that highlights areas in the world where user sessions exist, and it's possible to zoom in and out as well as hover your mouse over a country to see how many active sessions there are there. The table view shows active sessions, which can be filtered to narrow down your search based on criteria that you specify. There's also an actions column, and those actions allow you to terminate the session of a specific user, terminate all sessions of a specific user connected to a particular VPN gateway, or terminate all sessions associated with a specific VPN gateway. Over on the left, you can choose to view sessions by device, by encryption type, client version, operating system, or connection profile. The device identity certificate widget provides information about the certificate expiration of the remote access VPN gateways. You can now view expired certificates and certificates that are about to expire. The next thing I want to talk about are fleet upgrades. Upgrading devices, especially in large scale deployments can be time consuming. Since changing the workflow in version 7 of the software to help simplify this procedure, we've been adding even more improvements with each release. And 7.3 is no different. And in this release, we've added more improvements to the upgrade workflow. Here we can see the device upgrade wizard. In this example, we're showing a version 7.3 firewall management center displaying all the devices under its control that can be upgraded to the selected upgrade package. First, we select the upgrade package we want to deploy to our devices. And here we can see that it's version 7.2.0 build 82. Once the upgrade package is chosen, the wizard displays the number of devices that are candidates for this upgrade. Over on the right hand side, we see the device details and we're able to select all of the devices or just a subset of devices. Once selected, we add them to the selection and then we can continue with the upgrade process. 
A new unattended mode can be used to automatically perform each step of the upgrade workflow without manual user interaction. Before starting, simply choose how the system should handle compatibility and readiness checks, upgrade failures, and whether or not you want to upgrade the Snort engine during the actual procedure. Next, we're going to talk about the Azure Gateway Load Balancer. The Secure Firewall already supports the Gateway Load Balancer with Amazon Web Services. Now, with the 7.3 release, customers can also take advantage of the Gateway Load Balancer within Microsoft Azure. The Gateway Load Balancer in Microsoft Azure allows simple deployment and scale when inserting Network Virtual Appliances, or NVAs. As you can see here in this sample deployment scenario, the Azure Gateway Load Balancer is being used to transparently insert Cisco secure firewalls into the path of traffic flowing from the internet into an internal server or application. First, the inbound flow uses the public IP address of the Azure Public Load Balancer as the destination. The flow is then forwarded transparently from the Public Load Balancer to the Gateway Load Balancer. The Secure Firewall or Firewalls inspect the flow and if nothing violates the policy, the flow is returned to the Gateway Load Balancer. From here, the flow is returned to the Public Load Balancer and forwarded to the internal server or application. This particular scenario depicts a flow originating from the outside and coming in. The same deployment can obviously work for traffic originating inside your Azure environment outbound towards the internet. Gateway load balancing allows simple, scalable deployment of secure firewall within the Microsoft Azure platform. Next, we're going to talk about performance profiles. And up until now, CPU cores and memory allocation have been fixed by the Cisco Secure Firewall platform type, and that's based on performance testing. This can lead to scenarios where resources are reserved for some features that may not be used. So for example, if a firewall is primarily being used for VPN connections, then the resources allocated and reserved for advanced inspections can go unused. The same applies in situations where intrusion prevention is the main use case. Resources that are allocated and reserved for encryption or decryption again may go unused. In Secure Firewall, CPU cores are split between data plane cores and Snort Engine cores. So now with version 7.3, users are able to decide how those cores are allocated using the performance profiles. As you can see here, there are four profiles to choose from. The default profile is based on the existing performance testing for a specific platform. The other profiles allow you to allocate cores based on the use case. So for example, if you are deploying your secure firewall primarily to perform deep inspection to identify threats, vulnerabilities, and malware, then you would select the IPS heavy profile. As you can see, this allocates the majority of the CPU cores to the Snort engine. Now let's take a look at our umbrella auto tunnel configuration. So we've simplified the process of connecting your secure firewall devices to the Cisco Umbrella Cloud service. Integration of Secure Firewall with Umbrella helps organizations deploy a common DNS security policy, whether their users are on networks protected by Secure Firewall or working remotely. Integration up to now involved configuration at both the Firewall Management Center and within the Umbrella portal. In 7.3, a new simplified interface along with a new type of site-to-site -site VPN topology called the SASE topology, allows users to create and deploy network tunnels directly to Cisco Umbrella from the Firewall Management Center. This helps to reduce the risk of configuration errors by automating much of the process. To configure the integration, we open up the site-to-site -site VPN topology page and we click on the new Add SASE topology. This will allow you to edit your Umbrella Auto Tunnel con configuration. From this window, you can select the Umbrella data center that you want your devices to connect to, and then add in those secure firewall devices that will establish connections to that data center. This illustration shows an example deployment scenario where multiple branch or remote locations have the new SASE topology defined, connecting users via secure firewalls to the Cisco Umbrella Cloud. Now I'm going to cover some of the other enhancements available with the 7.3 release. 
We're going to start with clustering. We've added a new reconcile operations button that allows cluster members to be automatically re-registered to the firewall management center in the event of a registration failure. There's also now a native health monitoring of clusters from within the firewall management center and clusters can be backed up as a whole from the firewall management center rather than individual nodes within that cluster. And the clustering of secure firewall devices is supported in Microsoft Azure. Cluster support for Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform and also private clouds was introduced in the previous 7.2 release. IPv6 is now supported for these public and private cloud environments that you can see here. So Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Oracle Cloud and also private cloud instances such as KVM and VMware. Additional benefits with IPv6 support are the ability to configure SSH using a public IPv6 address, day zero configuration support, and also east-west and north-south IPv6 traffic inspection. We've also added some DHCPv6 features in this release, including the DHCPv6 PD client support, allowing secure firewall to act as, act as a delegating router that can receive one or more IPv6 prefixes that could then be used to distribute to clients. We also have DHCP version 6 stateless server support for the distribution of stateless auto address configuration addresses. And also DHCPv6 client support where each interface on the firewall can be configured as a DHCPv6 client. Our new loopback interface support provides greater redundancy in dual or multi ISP deployments by ensuring that it remains reachable through multiple physical interfaces. Users are able to configure a loopback interface with IP version 4 or IP, IP version 6 addresses. Some of the features that support the loopback interface are border gateway protocol, simple network management protocol, telnet and virtual tunnel interfaces. Finally, we have enhancements to our rule groups. The MITRE ATT&CK framework, which is a globally accessible knowledge base of cyber tactics, techniques and common knowledge, is being used more and more by our customers to increase their security posture. Recognising this, we have provided support for multiple levels of hierarchy to address frameworks such as this, including the new MITRE rule groups. MITRE ATT&CK rule groups are now delivered as part of the TALOS rule groups. A single rule can be part of multiple groups. Users have the option to configure the security levels for different MITRE groups and rule group actions can differ for different TALOS security levels. The intrusion event table as well now includes columns to highlight the MITRE attack techniques and those rule groups. I hope this overview of the 7.3 release of Cisco Secure Firewall has been useful and provided some insight to encourage you to try out this new version and the features that it brings. Please remember to look out for further content on our usual Cisco, Cisco portals, including the Cisco Firewall Essentials Hub and the Secure Firewall YouTube channel. Thanks for taking the time out to watch.